An unknown guy was jumping along with cute creatures in a circle, in the center of which was a stone. Suddenly, one of the previously cute creatures opened its mouth, from which two rows of sharp teeth emerged. But they did not want to eat a young guy, but a stone around which they had previously jumped. For some reason, the guy decided to start eating the crystal along with the creatures. People in the chat were surprised by this behavior. Let's go back a few years, where the same young guy was sitting for an interview with the director of the orphanage. The woman noted the kind soul of the guy, but their shelter is now in a difficult situation, and it will not be able to exist for more than three years. The guy came home in a depressed mood, as this shelter was dear to him. The main character, whose name was Houston, decided to get rich during these three years. Therefore, the guy went to the internet, where he came across an interview with the Awaken. This video interested the guy, as it was the most popular for how to get rich quick. A few years ago, a magic tower appeared on the continent. Its purpose was unknown. There were people whom the new structure took with the help of the portal, and those who returned did not comment to journalists on what was happening in the tower. The structure took only those people in whom magic was stored. Thanks to the Awakens, technology developed in a new magical direction on the continent, so these people were valued and rich. Suddenly, the main character's video is interrupted, and a large number of notifications begin to come to him. Houston opens one of the videos, which shows him in a strange place. Then another video opens, in which the main character develops more and more. As Houston understood the content of the video, in the future he will successfully conquer the tower. However, the main character does not know when the portal will open, so he signs up for the hall to become stronger. For two years, Houston continued to actively prepare to move to the tower. Suddenly, a bright glow appears behind him, which distracts his attention from his prayers. The main character is glad that after such a long wait, the portal has finally opened. Before entering the tower, Houston is offered to choose the difficulty level. He undoubtedly chooses the high one. The main character is given one hour for the first level test. In addition to this, he begins to stream. Houston was a little upset that his access to the phone was taken away from him, but quickly pulled himself together. All novice players start a stream when they get into the tower, which can be sponsored by people who decide to stay. A user with the nickname Leubov joins the main character's stream. Houston is going to make a good impression on its new subscriber. However, the main character decided not to spend his first coin his viewer appreciated the wisdom, but left the stream to study other newcomers. The main character collected seven subscribers during the study on the first level, as he was able to attract a lot of attention due to the high level of difficulty. With little time left before the end of the hour, Houston learns that the audience can't share information with him, since this tower has an administrator who keeps an eye on all the players. There is very little time left before the protagonist's trial begins, so he says goodbye to the audience. However, cute Popeye creatures appear from the portal, which surprises Houston. They look friendly, but have strong and sharp teeth that can be used to tear stones apart. The main character finds that the drunks are not the best opponents for the first time, since the audience has lost interest in the guy. Suddenly, the monsters begin to jump around the blue stone, an action that Houston notices. The guy decides to pretend to belong among the monsters, so as not to fight against them. Houston suggested that this stone is filled with magical power thanks to which artifacts are made. After the pre-dinner dance, the Popey begin to eat the stone. The main character continues to imitate their behavior. After a while, the guy notices changes in his body. It begins to glow. As a result, the priest took the main character for one of their own, so they were happy with his presence. A user under the nickname Liubov was surprised to find that Houston is still alive. The protagonist wakes up abruptly. He discovers that after completing the task, he fell asleep. He also sees that the priests were waiting for him to wake up. They wanted to continue following the main character. When Houston opened the information about the stream, he was happy to see what he saw, since 127 people had already subscribed to his stream. The main character explained to the audience that he chose this tactic of behavior because he considered it winning. Houston notices that another portal has opened that could take him to the second level. However, the audience stops him as the main character did not open the reward box. In it, he found a magic stone, which was expensive, in a bag with coins. When the main character took the magic stone in his hands, the priest swooped down on him, wanting to eat it. However, Houston stopped him because the crystal was expensive. The main character again tries to impress the audience in order to interest them by saying that he is going to the second level. 
Only the drunks who wanted to follow Houston for some reason went in the other direction. The main character decided to follow them as he thought that they wanted to show him something. In a secret room, Houston finds a talisman necklace that brings good luck. The protagonist recalls that in the video at the 15th level, this necklace saved his life. Houston puts his new artifact around his neck, but decides to hide it so that it doesn't catch the eye of the audience. As a result, the main character, together with the drunks, returns to the portal to continue his adventures. He finds himself in an open space that resembles a hidden arena from which the other levels of the tower are visible. On one of the walls, he notices an inscription that says that it is necessary to remember the spilled blood of those who are called heroes. In the next second, Houston has information about the beginning of the second level. A portal opens, which grows larger every moment until it exceeds the height of the protagonist many times over. A dragon turtle emerges from it, which was the worst boss in this trial. As a matter of urgency, the main character buys a one-handed raid's axe in the store, which is a masterpiece in this world. The monster attacks Houston with such speed and force that the guy's body disappears under clouds of dust. Fortunately, the main character managed to increase his reaction in two years, so he did not suffer from a turtle blow. Now it's Houston's turn to attack the monster. He lands a series of blows with his new weapon. The protagonist makes a final attack to crush the dragon turtle. However, the force of the blow is only enough for the monster to fall to the ground. Houston decides to take this opportunity to climb on the turtle's back. He grabs one of their spikes to hammer it into the monster's body. From the blow of the main character, the turtle explodes. Houston took advantage of the creature's abilities. Fortunately, at the last moment, the guy manages to jump away, so the explosion does not hit him. Houston is happy that he has access to the third level. The audience is also delighted with the successful fight of the main character. The guy allowed the drinkers to eat all the dragon turtle thorns, thereby fulfilling his promise. The main character makes a cool look in front of his viewers, trying to interest them. Houston checks his rewards, which he was given for completing the level. Among the boxes with achievements, he receives a spatial backpack, which only lucky people get. Also, the main character receives a hidden reward, which he decides to postpone until better times. Houston still gets a few blessings to choose from. He chooses a mana blessing. The guy decides to become a magical engineer in the future in order to blow up his enemies. The main character has lost a lot of blood, so he rather goes to the third level so that all his wounds are healed. Suddenly, a guy who looked tired comes out of another portal. The guy is happy to meet him, just like Houston. He also wants to know if the main character is a streamer. The newcomer looked tired. After all these levels, he introduced himself as Jack. The main character also gave his name. He assumed that there would be a team test on the third floor. Suddenly, out of nowhere, third level guards appeared who looked very intimidating. The main character prepared for battle. He knew that a terrifying test awaited him. On the hard difficulty level on the third floor, the opponents will be two statues, which will need to be defeated at the same time, because otherwise they will regenerate each other. The main character managed to avoid the first attack. Now it was his turn to attack. Houston managed to topple one of the statues with his strength, so there was only one enemy left. Now the main character quickly strikes a few more blows on the second statue before the first one has time to recover. The guy destroys the second monster, but a statue that has been defeated appears behind him. However, the guard directs his destructive gaze in the opposite direction from the protagonist. In the direction of Jack, who had not yet recovered from the blow, the statue threw its spear. Fortunately, at the last moment, the main character managed to protect the guy. The explosion occurred a few meters from them. Therefore, Houston threw all his strength into destroying the statues until they overpowered them. The main character is imbued with magical power and hits the guard with the help of Raids' one-handed axe. The guy defeats one of the statues, the last enemy is left, which must be defeated to pass the third level. The statue falls to the ground, and Houston puts all his strength into the blow. All viewers are delighted that the main character was able to single-handedly defeat two opponents. Houston was about to leave, but unexpectedly he was stopped by his partner. However, the protagonist does not want to talk to Jack at the moment, as he has already lost a lot of time on the third level. Therefore, Houston quickly escapes to the temple, which was defended by the guards, and finds a scroll there. From history, he learned that there was a cruel emperor on this land who loved to execute people, and his subjects were starving. As soon as the main character read the history of these places, a portal immediately opened for him. But before that, he decided to get a reward for winning the challenge. 
in which he came across coins. Houston was about to leave when he noticed that the priest had quieted down in the last few minutes. The cute creatures looked sickly. Even a delicious meal couldn't make them feel better. Therefore, the main character decided to get to the fifth level as soon as possible, as there will be people who can help him. However, before entering the portal, Houston was caught up by Jack, who thanked him for saving him. The guys agreed to meet sometime on other floors, and then the main character went into the portal. On the fourth level, a temple was waiting for Houston, sealed with a rune, which the guy had to destroy. The protagonist has six hours to solve the mystery of the floor, however. There were many temptations in the store at this level. The essence of the challenge is to paint all runes in the same color. Houston studied the algorithm from video for a long time, and eventually he was able to unravel it. However, there was a catch in this trial. At any moment, a rune could appear, which by itself changed color. Viewers in the chat discussed among themselves that the main character originally had a plan for placing runes. After a while, Houston was able to make all the symbols unified and a portal opened to him. As always, before going to the next level, the main character had to receive a reward. As a reward, and he got 5,000 coins, which the guy planned to spend on restoring his butt's health. The little red-haired boy was the unloved son of the royal family. Therefore, in secret from his father, he created a dungeon where he kept his secrets. This boy was the second son of the emperor of the land of Astrode. His name was Richard. In the body of this guy, there was a protagonist who carefully studied the story of his character. At the fifth level, an alternate reality was created, and a week was given to fulfill the character's wish or defeat his opponent, who was also overexposed into another body. Houston had to choose one of their directions, a magician, a magical engineer, or a guardian. However, the main character was not allowed to say that he wanted to become a magical engineer and was given an ability related to magical animals. It is important for all users to read information about their characters in order to gain knowledge about them and about the surrounding reality. The protagonist called a servant to find his butler for the request. The middle-aged man bowed to Richard, wanting to hear directions. The butler brought a cage with magical animals. These were the protagonist's drunkenness, which looked no better than on the third level. The man, whose name was George, suggested that the creatures look bad due to the large amount of mana absorbed. The butler also noticed that a magical glow emanated from the crown prince. The man is worried about the main character, as a large amount of absorbed mana can have a bad effect on his health. But the guy calmed him down. Also before leaving, George asked the crown prince to be more careful, as the first prince began to commit dangerous actions. The man swore to serve Richard's mother forever, and after her death he began to raise the guy. The main character went down to his secret hideout and took a cage with drunkenness there. In the dungeon, Richard kept his other magical animals as he hid them from his father. Also before leaving, the main character thought about who his opponent could be in terms of level. At this time, the young man was training with a sword. His attacks were fast and accurate. This person was the rival of the protagonist. He chose the guard class, so his physical skills were high. The boy was another successful aspiring fighter who was known among the residents of the tower for his cruelty. For example, in the third level, he used his partner as a human shield. The guy whose name was Kai was distracted from his thoughts by the second crown prince. The knight fought in front of the main character, although he was confused at the beginning. Kai was nicknamed the Black Lion. He had the status of an honest man who hated liars. The crown prince explained his sudden appearance by saying that he wanted to thank his subject with expensive alcohol. However, Kai called the wrong name for the drink, so Houston immediately guessed that the guy was his opponent. He told the knight about this, saying that he should have studied the history of the character better. Kai was about to swing his sword to kill his opponent, but he was stopped by a shout from the butler, which attracted the attention of everyone present with its unexpected sharpness. However, Richard stopped George, saying that he was only asking the guy to show his skills, trying to soften the tense situation and prevent bloodshed. The butler strongly recommended that Kai be more cautious next time, reminding him of the importance of discipline and respect for the enemy. When the second crown prince returned with the man to his chambers, he noticed that George missed the old days where there were battles. The butler leaves, but not before asking Richard to be more careful, taking care of his safety. Despite everything, the main character is determined to pass the fifth level and reach the ending of his character. Meanwhile, Kai received information about who Richard really was. Viewers in the chat told the guy that there is a way to curse his opponent if you know his real name. 
An hour ago, Kai caught up with the main character in the corridor of the palace, but the guy already knew the plan of his opponent, shrewdly feeling the danger and preparing for a possible clash. Therefore, the knight runs away from Richard to put his plan into action. In the evening, Kai comes to a secret place that was suggested to him by the audience from the chat and praise to the patron saint of the players. However, the administrator curses the guy because he called the wrong name of his victim. In fact, it was a well-thought-out plan of the main character. Now Kai has reset all his skills to zero. Some time ago, Houston changed its name to Houston 2 in the settings. Therefore, the knight's plan did not work. Now he needs to start developing all the skills from the beginning. Suddenly, the protagonist hears screams outside the door of his room in the palace. It is Kai who tries to get to Richard, but the guards do not let him through, but the main character allows the knight to enter. Almost immediately, the guy attacks the main character with a sword, wanting to deal with him with brute force. It is not difficult for the main character to dodge Kai's blow, as he has lost all his combat power. Houston says that he will not kill the guy, as he will still need him. After the disappointed Kai left, the protagonist pondered how to complete the game as the second crown prince of the empire, Astroud. The story switches to the protagonist's first attempt to complete the fifth level in the tower. The young man heard a commotion in the palace and went to find out what caused so much commotion. One of the counts of the empire, Astroud, told the protagonist that the emperor was killed, and now there is a trial against crown prince Richard as he was caught in the act. The young man noticed that the emperor's chambers had always been guarded by beast-like creatures, but a weak person like the crown prince couldn't defeat them. Astroud Court is famous for the fact that everyone here is judged fairly. If anyone initiates a disorder, he will be punished to the fullest extent of the law. The main character also sat in the courtroom and listened attentively to the opening speech. The second crown prince Richard, who was currently standing in front of the podium in handcuffs, was accused of killing the emperor. The judge said that shortly before the death of the emperor, a young man came to his chambers. When the guards heard screams from the room after half an hour of talking, they immediately burst in. The guards noticed that the emperor was dead, and a frightened crown prince was standing over his body. In the emperor's bowl and on the sleeve of the guy's shirt, the same deadly poison was found. One of the guards confirmed the judge's words, so Richard confessed to the murder of the ruler. Before sentencing, the butler George asked everyone to reconsider the decision, as he knew that the second crown prince was not capable of this. The main character in his first playthrough was horrified by what was happening on the continent of Ostrud and promised to destroy the tower. Houston woke up after a short sleep. He came up with a plan on how to complete the level for his character. He began by reading the crown prince's story again, suggesting that Richard was interested in magical animals as he was interested in the behavior of beast-like creatures. However, there were few details written in the book, so he called his butler. The protagonist wanted to know why his father slapped him in the face when he wanted to tame another magical animal as a child. As soon as the second crown prince found out the whole truth, he immediately went to the emperor's chambers. After the death of his mother, Richard, the ruler ceased to trust people and closed himself off. George told the guy that the magical animal that the prince wanted was too dangerous for a little boy. The main character reached the emperor's chambers, but before asking for an audience, he turned off the internal chat for the audience. In the end, Houston got what he wanted. He apologized to the emperor for the late reception. The main character decided to show a new prince who is ready to become emperor. Richard noted that he is aware of the fact that his father's ring, with which he controls beast-like creatures, is fake. The emperor tensed sharply. He wanted proof of what Houston meant. Richard tells about the ball in honor of the first crown prince when he showed his leadership qualities in battle. At that ball, the young prince spilled wine on the emperor's uniform and while wiping it, replaced the ring with which to control beast-like creatures. It seemed as if the emperor was angry at the words of the main character, but Houston was sure that in fact the father loves his youngest son. So Richard went on to say that he was well aware that the emperor was aware of what had happened. The second crown prince also asked his father to make Astroud the new emperor of the land. A user under the nickname Lyubov watched the actions of the main character. He was delighted with his act. Houston thanked everyone for their support in the form of money. He decided to continue in the same vein. Closer to noon, Richard was on his way to the magic workshop to learn new skills. But the first crown prince blocked his way. The protagonist realized that most likely Richard's brother learned about his visit to the emperor from beast-like creatures. 
The first crown prince was angry that his brother had not been as confident as he was now. The altercation between the two crown princes was stopped by Master Bran, who worked at the palace. The man began to talk on an equal footing with the first crown prince, as he was making a lot of noise outside the workshop. The obvious display of disrespect further infuriated the first crown prince, but he had no choice but to leave. Bran went to his studio. The main character took the moment to talk to him. Houston was delighted with the sight of the workshop, as he liked the smell of oil. He decided to pump up his skills that will help him on the path of a magical engineer. However, due to the fact that the main character tried to learn many abilities at once, he became ill. Then he went to the part of the room where Master Bran usually worked. The main character asked the man to allow him to develop in the field of magical engineering in his laboratory. Bran offered the main character a test task to prove his firm intentions. Houston diligently tried to interpret the latent circle, which was an analog of steel. Master Bran noticed that the main character managed to complete the test task only halfway, but he allowed the guy to work in his laboratory. When there was one day and 16 hours left until the end of the fifth level test, George went down to Richard's workshop. It turns out that in this passage, the second crown prince is also accused of killing the emperor. Richard was immediately handcuffed, and they were about to take him to court, branding him a criminal. George understood that there was not a single person in the courtroom except him who would like to help Richard. But the young man continued to stand without a shadow of fear. The judge read exactly the same conclusion as in the first playthrough of the main character. However, this time Richard confidently denied all accusations against the murder of his father. At this moment, people in the courtroom began to whisper anxiously as a new character appeared in court. The emperor came into the room looking quite alive and well. All those who until recently wished death to the ruler now bowed down before him. The emperor wanted to know how a court that had promised to judge everyone fairly could make such a terrible mistake. He asked one of his closest subjects to tell the essence of his son's trial. After hearing the story again, the emperor immediately issued a verdict that the second crown prince was not guilty. And he also ordered all those involved in this stupid performance to be taken to prison for further proceedings. The story goes back four days when Richard came to the Emperor's chambers to convince him to cooperate. Richard was sure that as soon as it became known about the death of the ruler, his brother would do everything possible to publicly humiliate the main character. The first crown prince was taken into custody by two beast-like guards. He resisted as he did not want to admit his guilt. However, his father, in a menacing tone, ordered him to obey since the Emperor was now sitting before him. The first crown prince felt a terrifying aura emanating from the ruler, so he fell silent. Richard asked the emperor's permission to announce the charges against his brother. The king did not resist the decision of the second crown prince. Richard wanted revenge on his brother for all the long years of humiliation, so he continued to implement his plan. The protagonist asked the first crown prince what he knows about the assassination of the emperor and whether he is involved in it. However, the guy denies everything, he is still confident in his invincibility. The main character demanded to provide evidence of non-involvement in the case, but this caused only laughter from the first crown prince. The young man tries to put pressure on his brother, believing that Richard is still subject to his influence. However, without a moment's hesitation, the main character waved off the hand of the first crown prince. Houston recalls his character's childhood when his brother gave him advice on what to ask his father for his birthday. Richard asked his father for a magical animal for his birthday, but the emperor rudely refused him. Therefore, in secret from his father, the second crown prince had a secret room in which he took care of magical animals. However, at some point, the emperor found out about his son's hiding place and ordered him to burn all the animals. Richard understood that only the first crown prince knew about this place besides him, and only he could tell the emperor about the secret hobby. As a result, disappointed in life, the main character runs away from home and gets drunk in a tavern. Next to him sat a magical animal hunter who boasted of his successes. Richard could not stand hearing about this, so he said everything to the man's face. As a result, he was beaten. The main character decided that he could not trust anyone else but himself. The story returns to the present, where the first crown prince called a beast-like creature as a witness. The young man hoped to use his ring, which he had previously stolen from the emperor, to force the guard to deceive the court. However, his plan did not work, as the beast-like creature honestly replied that the ruler was killed by the first crown prince. 
The emperor noticed the confusion in his son's face, so he asked what exactly worried him. The first crown prince dropped the ring in a fit of desperation. He knew that his plan had been a loser. Richard picked up the fallen ring, and the emperor noted that this jewelry was nowhere near a real magical artifact. Meanwhile, the main character asked the ruler to pass judgment himself. The last hope of the first crown prince was the people who were in the conspiracy with him. However, instead of acting among high-ranking people, the young man saw only condemnation. The first crown prince was arrested by the guards, as he was found guilty. However, before that, Richard wants to take revenge on his brother for his long years of suffering. The main character also hits the first crown prince in the face for daring to go against the life of the emperor. As punishment for the first crown prince, Richard asks for the harshest punishment. The emperor agrees with his son and says that as a punishment, the first crown prince will be tied to a horse and dragged through all the cities of the empire. The young man couldn't believe that his life would end in such a horrible way. Only one step separated him from a happy ending, which was to become emperor. The current ruler was pleased with this unexpected offer and issued a final decree appointing Richard as the new emperor of Astroud. At this very moment, the main character notices that everyone around him is frozen in place. In the next moment, Houston begins to be pulled into the portal that is opened as he has passed the fifth floor. The main character finds himself in a certain space that resembles a transit point between floors. The guy receives a message from the administrator asking him to become an administrator. Houston refuses, so the message is changed to red with a warning that he will die in case of disobedience. The administrator will be waiting for the guy on the 10th floor. The protagonist wishes to continue living on the 5th floor until the trial time is over. The emperor is going to arrange a feast in honor of the appointment of a new ruler. Meanwhile, Kai escorted the desperate first crown prince to the dungeon. Suddenly, the guy receives an administrative notice saying that he lost his test. Now Kai will feel the full horror of the collapsing world. The first crown prince grabs him by the hand. The next day during the feast, the main character was going to visit one room. It was a room where hung a picture of Richard's mother, which the young man looked very much like. One of the viewers watched the story of the development of the character of Houston. The man was touched by the actions of the main character. Houston only hoped that Richard would be a happier person after he left. The main character woke up the next day from a terrible hangover, from which he felt bad. The guy checked what was happening in the chat while he was intoxicated and noticed that during this time he managed to get a large number of coins. Houston decided to go to his father's rest as he wanted to close one hole in his life. The protagonist wanted to know why the emperor punished the boy for hiding magical animals. The man responded to his words by saying that when he came to the basement, he found animals there that were ready to go crazy. He later learned that they had been brought to this state by the first crown prince. So the emperor was disappointed that Richard was as easily manipulated as his mother. Now the current emperor bowed before his father, expressing deep gratitude for the love and care. Next, the main character went to the magic workshop to greet Bran. The man also said that the guy can take back his magic gloves, which the protagonist had previously created. This was Houston's last unfinished business, and now he went to his chambers, hoping that his actions would have some impact on the Astroud Empire. Meanwhile, on the third floor of the tower, one of the newcomers had passed the test. He found a scroll in the temple with a text that spoke of the successful Emperor Richard. The main character returned to his chambers and went down to the basement to free his butt. The magical creatures were very happy to be reunited with their friend. Houston set about improving the glove's capability, which he had been working on for a long time. In the tower, there was already a famous magical engineer, Reynolds, who greatly developed this direction attracting attention and respect for himself with his unique achievements. And even though the main character did not consider himself the same genius, he still tried to improve the magic glove, striving for perfection and learning new possibilities of this item. Time on the fifth floor was over for Houston, and as soon as he got into the middle room, he was attacked by angry comments that came from Kai's stream. After the protagonist blocked the chat, he proceeded to open the level reward, trying not to pay attention to online aggression. On top of the box was a white t-shirt, which did not fit the concept of a reward, causing some bewilderment in Houston. However, Houston realized that the administrator was hinting at his first passage of the tower. Next, the main character takes out heroic level boots, which however are difficult to learn to operate without training, feeling the weight of responsibility for new equipment. At the end of the box was a bag of coins containing 5,000 gold. 
which was a nice bonus and motivation for further efforts. Before being sent to the sixth level, the main character decided to hide his butt in a backpack, as the next floor was a team challenge. Houston, without a moment's hesitation, went to the sixth floor to pass it as soon as possible. The main character went to the edge of the forest, where three players were already warming themselves by the fire. The guy in armor was the first to introduce himself. He said that his name was Brian and he belonged to the night class. The next mage introduced himself, who said that the main character could address him by the name Huang. The last girl introduced herself was Jessica. She was the most mysterious of the team, as her profession was unknown. When Houston introduced himself and said that he belonged to the class of magical engineers, everyone in the squad was very surprised, as they considered this profession useless. After getting to know each other, everyone began to discuss the area in which they found themselves. The clearing was shrouded in fog. The rest time was over and a monster was supposed to appear from the forest. A huge cockroach appeared before the heroes. The girl and the magician noticed that the people in the chat room were worried about what was happening. However, Brian did not listen to them and rushed to attack the monster, trying to show his skills. However, it was not difficult for the monster to deflect the blow. The knight sword flew several meters away from him. Brian froze in horror, staring straight into the monster's face, waiting for it to attack. The protagonist noticed that in front of them was a cleaner, who was the lowest-ranked monster in the demon world. However, despite this, the monster was too strong for the sixth floor. In the next moment, Jessica stepped onto the attacking line, covering Brian with herself. The girl struck the cleaner with her fist, so that blood flew everywhere. Jessica dealt with the monster with one blow, but she was upset that her clothes were stained with blood. After passing the first wave, the main character was happy that so far everyone was coping without him. In the chat, it was discussed that other players have a rather sad atmosphere on the streams, while Brian was happy that his finger was cut off. With the help of a magic gauntlet, the main character helped stop the knight's blood. Soon the second wave was supposed to begin. Everyone decided that Jessica would be on the front line and the magician in Houston would be the support. In the next battle, two cleaners came out. The girl went on the attack. This time, Jessica again coped on her own. Houston was happy about it. He recalls that in the walkthrough video, the girl was also in the tower. Everyone called her a gift for close combat. Jessica made it to the fourth floor with the help of luck and donations. And on the fifth floor, she met a hermit who taught her the basics of close combat. In the third wave, four cleaners were supposed to appear, but only two came out. Jessica went on the attack against them. And in the meantime, the main character felt movement behind him. Huang tried to attack the cleaners who came out from the other side of the forest. However, his fifth floor magic didn't work on the demonic creatures, so the protagonist took the initiative. Jessica, meanwhile, was distracted from the fight, starting to worry about her teammates. However, the monster took advantage of this opportunity, and the girl was already ready to take the blow. At that very moment, Houston arrived, and with the help of a magic glove, he dealt with the three cleaners. After the third wave, everyone prepared for the next challenge. Now there should be eight cleaners at a time. Huang said that the strongest magic he wielded was not enough to defeat the monster. The fourth wave was supposed to start in a few seconds. Everyone was ready for battle. However, it turned out that instead of doubling the number of cleaners, their number was squared and became equal to 16. This means that in the next round, there will be 256 monsters. So Houston is ready to use the full power of the gauntlet. He used a strong flow of magic to deal with all the cleaners at once with a single blow. Fortunately, the main character had enough strength to deal with all the monsters. The rest of the members couldn't believe their eyes, as Houston was on a completely different level. However, the protagonist spent too much mana on this blow, so even the magic stone in the gauntlet did not help him much. At this point, everyone receives a notification that the trial is over and that they can go to the seventh floor. The warlock and Jessica are worried about Houston as he looks emaciated, but the guy calms them down. The girl approached the main character as she wanted to know his real name. At the same time, she took off her mask. Jessica said that the user was not on the nickname Houston. Then the main character remembered that on the fifth floor, he changed his name, calling himself Houston too. Most of the night's viewers rushed to the main character's stream, so the guy turned off the entrance so that no one would destroy the atmosphere in the chat. Houston didn't want to get the award in front of everyone, but he still hoped that the administrator wouldn't decide to give it again. However, the protagonist's expectations were not met, as his box was the most chic. 
While Houston was opening the box, everyone was watching him closely, which made the guy angry. From the box, Houston took out a heroic item that had the ability to control temperature and increase mana levels. Brian once again asked the main character about blocking the entrance to the stream, hoping that he would refuse him, and so it happened. Everyone gathered to go to the seventh floor through the portal, thanking Houston for saving them. The main character has remained on the sixth floor for now, waiting for his glove to cool down. He opened the backpack from which the hungry drinkers immediately flew out, they wanted to eat a magic glove. However, Houston forbade them to do so, and in the meantime, Jessica appeared behind him, who had not yet had time to enter the portal. The girl was touched by the sight of her butt, so she could not ask the main character a question. She went to the seventh floor. Houston also decided that it was time to move on. On the next level, he was waiting for a psychological test. When the protagonist went through the portal, he received a notification that the required number of players had been collected and that viewers could not leave the stream during the challenge. On the territory of the seventh floor, a man was waiting for him, who at the moment was inspecting the area. When the man turned around, he carefully looked at the main character, studying him. In his opponent, Houston recognized a man he had met earlier and who was known for his cruelty. The man introduced himself as Jacob. He gave the appearance of a respectable person. The main character asked his opponent what he worked for before coming to the tower, to which the man did not answer anything intelligible. Jacob said that he would go to the other side so that the trial could begin. The statue pointed its finger at the man, thereby giving him the opportunity to start the round. First of all, Jacob asked the main character if he knew him before climbing the tower, to which Houston confidently replies no, as he believes that the man cannot know his secret. But Jacob says that the guy is lying. And indeed, the statue senses the lies of the protagonist, so one bill is in favor of the man. Now it's Houston's turn to ask the question. He wants to know if Jacob could kill innocent people, to which he receives a positive answer. Now the man asks the main character with a grin about whether he originally knew about the test of the seventh floor. Houston again tries to lie to this question, but he fails to do so. The main character knows the mechanism of the Statue of Truth. It analyzes the answer, taking into account the mindset and thoughts. Therefore, Houston asks the creepiest possible question. He asks about whether Jacob could have killed his wife if the test required it. The man is sure that he could not do this, since he would not have raised his hand against his beloved. However, this turns out to be a lie. The score now becomes two to one. Jacob wins. The man cannot believe that the main character already knew that he was married. This was another question from Jacob. So this time, Houston answered in the affirmative so as not to lose. And the next moment, he asks again about the murder of his wife. The protagonist claims that a man is capable of cutting his wife into small pieces if the test requires it. But Jacob doubts this. Houston is sure that the man is lying. His eyes sparkle from the inside. Another point in favor of the main character. And in the meantime, Jacob showed his true colors. The man has one last chance left, so he asks the main character if he has climbed the tower up to this point. Houston is surprised that Jacob can have such information, but the guy answers this question in the negative. The man is sure that he has caught the main character, so he says that the guy is lying. However, instead of showing two blue glasses and one red, the Statue of Truth opens all three red eyes in favor of Houston. The protagonist answered Jacob's last question honestly, as he is no longer the guy from the videos he has been watching for the past two years. Now Jacob was facing a terrible fate for losing the test on the seventh floor. The Statue of Truth turned to him and wrapped its arms around him. The man had no choice but to wait for death. Houston recalls that in the last playthrough, when they crossed paths, he asked the man about his interest in conquering the tower. However, Jacob replied that he did not care about anything in this world, since everything only caused boredom for him. Moments later, the man washes his bloody hands, and Houston is shocked that Jacob was able to kill his wife. To this, the man replies to the main character that the relationship in the tower is unnecessary. Before his death, Jacob wants to know how Houston knows so much about him, to which the main character evasively replies that they knew each other before. As a reward for level 7, Houston received the Seven Snake Master's armlet, which was the third item from the heroic set. The main character did not keep anything else on the seventh floor, so he went further. On the eighth floor, he went out into the woods, Houston feeling overtired as he hadn't rested properly after so many hours of testing. Therefore, the main character decided to take a nap in the shade until the test begins. 
The essence of the task was to defeat the monster of the floor, but for Houston, the monsters were drunkards, who, instead of attacking, only rejoiced at the arrival of the main character. Meanwhile, the three butts from the first floor began to be jealous of Houston's new cute creatures. Since there was no aggression from the butt, the tower believed that Houston had passed the test and opened a portal. The main character decided to see the reward that he was given for this test. The scroll spoke of the world tree. After the collapse of which the world of Astral began to plunge into darkness, all these events will take place on the 25th level. Before leaving, Houston decided to rest a little to recuperate. However, the priest did not give him much time to sleep. As they arranged games of King of the Hill in his chest, the viewer in the chat was touched by such behavior with their butt. The main character said goodbye to the cute creatures. It was clear from them that they were upset about the guy's departure. On the ninth floor, there was a level similar to the fourth, only now the difficulty had increased many times over. On top of that, this test was a team one. The protagonist's partner was already waiting for him. It was a cute girl in a magical robe who turned to Houston and introduced herself as Vanessa. However, the main character knew her real essence. In the video, this girl was known as a witch. It cost her nothing to sacrifice her teammates. Houston agreed with Vanessa that they would divide the walls into two parts, and each would do half. The main character remembered the correct sequence from the video, so it was not difficult for him to do his part quickly. When Houston turned around, he noticed that Vanessa was hesitating on her half of the wall. Therefore, the main character offered the girl help. She was very grateful to him. However, when the test was over, the guy asked him to stop pretending to be a weak girl out of Vanessa. Her partner only reacted to his words with a snide grin, since it took her exactly 10 minutes to pass the test on the fifth floor. Vanessa asked the protagonist who he really was because she saw him walk through the seventh floor with the help of the floor revision feature. Houston knew that if he answered her questions incorrectly, she would chase him throughout the climb in the tower. However, before answering, the main character asked the girl for her magic robe. Vanessa was shocked by this response and at first thought that he wanted to look at her body, but Houston was only interested in increasing the mana level. The protagonist decided to answer vaguely about his knowledge of the tower. He said that he had hidden sources. As soon as Houston said that, he went straight to the portal on the 10th floor until Vanessa asked more uncomfortable questions. The main character ended up in the city, but before starting to inspect it, he turned off the stream. As soon as Houston was on one of the main roads, he noticed how a little girl accidentally bumped into a nobleman. However, instead of yelling at the commoner, the man only asked her to be careful. Houston was interested in this scene. He felt that the world had undergone some changes. In the central park of the city, an elderly man was sitting on a bench and feeding pigeons with bread. The main character approached the man and asked him for permission to sit next to him. As Houston recalls, it was here in the last playthrough that he met the administrator of the tower and accepted his offer to become an administrator. In this time, the main character decided that the elderly man is the administrator of the tower. This turned out to be true, so the man no longer had to hide his true face. Suddenly, the main character finds himself in a winter wasteland where soldiers are fighting demonic creatures. Houston doesn't understand how he could have moved to this level so quickly because just recently, he was talking to the administrator. It was the 15th floor where monsters appeared constantly. There was no end to them. From behind the flower, more and more monsters from the demon realm came, and the soldiers continued to fight them, but their strength was coming to an end. The main character felt a movement behind him, and when he turned around, he found that a monster with large teeth wanted to devour him. Houston stepped back, and at that very moment, he was back in the city park. The administrator squeezed the pigeon's head as he was no longer quite in control of his emotions. What the main character saw was his fate. Houston still refused to become an administrator. Then the man wanted to reveal to him the secret of how the guy got the videos of his ascent. Houston himself did not mind learning the truth, so he listened carefully to the story. The administrator began by telling the main character about the structure of the tower. He said that there can be only one leader, and the one who is removed from his post dies. The man did everything possible to put the world of Astrode in order. However, each time, new problems arose that destroyed all the established rules, and they had to start over. Houston was the best at restoring the world of Astrode, so now the history of the Empire has been rewritten. The administrator also said that it was the main character himself who sent himself a walkthrough video to the future. 
The man noted that he still continues to see Houston from the first playthrough in the face of the main character. However, the guy did not agree with him. He was now only interested in the reasons for the change in the world of Astroud. The administrator again repeated his words that the main character coped with the test best of all. Instead of agreeing to become the head of the tower, Houston shows an unflattering tin to a man. The story is transferred to a room where a user under the nickname Lyubov is worried about his favorite streamer, as Vanessa molested him on the ninth floor. The administrator, angry with the main character, turns into a pigeon and flies away, leaving the guy alone. Houston continues to stand in the park. At this moment, the drunks climb out of the backpack. The main character turns on the stream and notices that the number of viewers has not changed so much. Houston continues his way, teleported, to the craft part of the city. He enters the workshop where Bran used to work, but notices a different name on the building. However, instead of the old master, the main character found a young guy who has now set up his craft here. Houston showed the magic glove, which was now unusable, and asked for it to be fixed. The master agreed to do this, but now the main character had to find a magic stone. There were two auctions in this city. Houston went to the one that was for wealthy citizens. Among those present were both nobles and commoners. They talked among themselves. Houston notices that Jessica is sitting at one of the tables in the waiting room. There was an awkward silence between them after they ordered their drinks. The main character decided to start the dialogue first. He asked the girl about her school uniform, which she always wore. Jessica, sipping hot chocolate, said that these clothes meant a lot to her. Houston offered the girl to become friends, so he sent the request as a notification. Jessica was taken by surprise, but she didn't mind helping each other when needed. The auction was about to begin, so all the guests gathered in the central hall. A young guy in a suit said that the first lot would soon be taken out. After a few items, the protagonist discovered what he had been looking for so long, a bloody magic stone that was hidden in an amulet. Houston was immediately interested. This was the first lot he had bid on. However, he was immediately interrupted by a noble woman who loved jewelry. The main character really wanted to get his hands on the bloodstone, so he continued to raise the price. But when the bet became more than 30,000 gold, Houston realized that for the time being, he could get by with an ordinary magic stone. However, at that moment, Jessica entered the battle for the bloodstone. Now it was a confrontation between two girls who wanted to get their hands on the jewelry, each for their own reasons. After the auction, the main character came out, carrying a magic stone in his hand, which he bought for 6,000 gold. However, before leaving, Houston spotted Jessica twirling the jewelry she had won like a toy. As soon as the girl saw the main character, she immediately gave him a magic stone in his hand. When asked by Houston about what it all means, Jessica said it was as a gift for a friend. Immediately after what was said, the girl left. She remembered the first meeting with the main character. Jessica returned to the shelter a few years ago to ask for financial support. Before entering, she ran into the main character, but then she did not know anything about him. Jessica came to the headmistress to ask for money for a uniform for high school. On this day, Houston just left money to the wards of the shelters for spending, so the woman gave part of the funds to the schoolgirl. Jessica only now realized that the guy was Houston, which was why the school uniform was so dear to her. As a result, the girl decided that the main character should not know about this meeting two years ago. In the meantime, Houston had already arrived at the workshop where his magic glove was ready. The main character also took out a bloodstone that Jessica had given him earlier. The master was delighted that Houston managed to get such a high-quality material. For the magic gauntlet, he made a compartment for the stone, which can be adjusted to the size of the object. The main character was delighted with such a qualitative improvement of the magic glove. However, when he asked about payment, the master refused any money. The main thing for him was to work on an interesting project. After visiting the master, Houston decided to go to the next level tomorrow. Already in the morning, the main character was woken up by hungry drinkers who demanded food for themselves. Houston took an untreated magic stone from his backpack for them, which they happily ate. After that, the main character returned to the workshop, where he was able to pick up the ready-made glove. The master was delighted with the work done. Before Houston left, the man asked him to name the magic glove. A portal led to the 11th floor, which was in the city park. It was seen only by the players. Houston considered putting together a group, but he dismissed it because he couldn't predict the administrator's behavior. Before passing to the next 10 levels, the main character has the opportunity to choose the difficulty level again. 
he decides to leave the high one. At the 11th level, there was a team test. Two players were already arguing about something. When they saw Houston, they were delighted as they decided that the guy was a magician. However, the main characters said that they were mistaken, which greatly upset his teammates. At that moment, a huge monster was heading to the island where the test was taking place, which the guys had to defeat. It was a dragon turtle that Houston had already met on the second floor. The two knights were frightened when they saw the monster, so the protagonist took out his one-handed raids axe. The first thing the dragon turtle did was attack the knights who had fled from it at the first opportunity. Therefore, the main character went on the attack to distract the monster's attention to himself. With Raids' one-handed axe, Houston struck a powerful blow that harmed the turtle. However, now it was the dragon turtle's turn to attack. It curled up into a sphere and rolled towards the main character. However, before the monster reached its goal, Houston climbed on top of the turtle, noting that it was easier to do so now than on the second level. This time, the main character's plan was the same as last time. He wanted to hammer one of the spikes into the turtle's body, considering this method the most effective for inflicting damage on the monster. To make the explosion stronger, Houston decided to jump over the monster, giving extra power to his punch. The main character struck a spike with a volley, which flew at a high speed into the dragon turtle shell, accurately hitting the target. A powerful explosion thundered, which caused a lot of damage to the monster's body, causing it to let out a loud roar in pain. Now two portals have opened up to the main character. One of them led to the 10th level and the other to the 11th level. The two knights who proved useless in this battle were very grateful to Houston for his courage and skill in the battle. After his teammates moved on, the main character decided to open two chests from the 11th and 9th levels, hoping for useful rewards. Since the level on the 11th floor was not complicated, the reward was the most ordinary. But this did not embarrass the hero. He accepted it with gratitude. But for the ninth floor, the main character received the leather cloak of the master of the seven snakes, Lotonto, of heroic rank. Houston adjusted the cloak to his liking. Now he had increased self-defense and magical powers. The main character decided to continue collecting rewards for the eleventh floor. It was not difficult for him to defeat the dragon turtle this time as well. Houston also noted that the cloak was useful in battle as additional protection. Also this time, the main character again went to the 10th level without giving his name. Houston sat down in the city park, where the priest could feel free, since there was no one in it. The main character decided to give names to magical creatures, so he studied several books. However, Houston still thought for a long time. He brushed aside all the options that viewers offered in the chat. Still, the main character decided to give names to the priests. One of them, he gave the name Laha in honor of the goddess of love. Houston named another cute creature in honor of the god of bravery. He named him Coden, and he named the last of the priests in honor of the goddess of wisdom. The main character gave him the name Baron. The cute creatures seemed to feel an even closer connection with Houston. They happily pounced on him. The main character was embarrassed by his manifestation of care. He completely forgot about the fact that his stream was going on now. Before going to the next floor, Houston again asked his booty to get into his backpack. However, he was still worried about the magical creatures, but he still decided that he shouldn't attract attention until at least level 15. The main character came to the 12th level last. There were four people in the team in total. One of the players was a knight named Derek who greeted Houston. Also next to the guy was a girl who introduced herself as Megan. She was of the assassin class. The third person on the team was the knight, who was the protagonist spectator from the very beginning. However, as soon as the guy wanted to call Houston the emperor, the main character immediately stopped him, as he did not want a biased attitude towards himself. The knight, whose name was Romeo, was happy to meet his idol. The main character was only a little embarrassed by his words. He asked Romeo to keep everything a secret. Houston asked everyone what their attempt to pass the 12th floor was, to which he realized that it was the first time they had climbed so high. Derek said that he was not popular at the beginning of the game, so he turned off his stream completely. Meanwhile, Romeo was looking for novice players with whom he could join the clan. However, as soon as the guy met the main character, then after he passed the 10th level, Romeo became rich. Now the other members of the team wanted to know the class that owned Houston. Romeo was angry at their disappointment when they heard the protagonist's response, but it wasn't the first time Houston had heard such a reaction. Meanwhile, the test was about to begin, so Romeo was given the opportunity to make a plan for the passage 
since he was already taking part on the 12th floor. Romeo knew that in this test they could come across either yetis or poisonous dogs, and skills are useless against them since monsters are easy to learn. Romeo knew that the main character could easily cope on his own, but Huston did not want to stand out. At that very moment, a notification came that the test was about to begin, and all the heroes gathered together, ready for the final battle. On the twelfth floor, the opponents were yetis, who attacked in a large crowd, deafening with their bestial screams and powerful blows. Derek was overconfident, so he went into battle, thereby destroying the entire team formation and leaving his comrades without the necessary support. The main character did not stop him, since everyone should feel the consequences of rash actions, and now Derek had to cope with it on his own. As Derek approached the monster leader, he felt his terrifying aura, so he froze in place, realizing that he was facing a real test challenge. However, the knight was able to overcome this obstacle. He tried to push the Yeti a few meters back, using all his physical strength and fighting skills. Derek then used his aura manipulation ability, as normal attacks didn't work, and he had to rely on his internal resources and skills. But still, the knight did not succeed, and the leader wanted to hit the guy with a monster, demonstrating his ruthless strength and thirst for victory. However, at that very moment, the main character stopped the attack with his axe, taking advantage of the moment of the decisive confrontation to help his comrade. Houston took the blow himself. He realized that the Yeti was quite strong, so he needed to deal with him as soon as possible, and decided to fight the monster to protect his friends. After he defeated the leader, he went to the crowd of monsters to deal with them. After a while, Houston dealt with all the Yetis on his own. The rest of the team was very grateful to him for winning this challenge. Before leaving, however, Derek wanted to know what the Yeti leader had told him before his strike. The main character did not know the language of magical animals well, but he could translate this word. The monster called the knight a child. Derek was embarrassed by what he heard. He thanked Houston again for saving him and quickly left this floor further. Romeo said that he was stuck on the 10th floor, so most likely the audience in the main character's chat dislikes him. Houston thanked the guy for watching his streams and donating to him. The knight did not expect such words, so he once again thanked the main character for showing him the right attitude to the passage of the tower. Before leaving for the next floor, the main character decided to check the reward. Since the difficulty was ordinary, there was nothing outstanding in the reward. Houston went to the 13th floor, but when he arrived, he did not receive a notification that the required number of players had been collected. Several people were sitting around the fire. A man in armor greeted the main character. The rest of the group looked less welcoming. Their faces did not express emotion. The main character immediately realized that all the people gathered here knew each other. Houston had previously met these guys in a video walkthrough. They belonged to members of the infamous Black Scorpion group. They are known for going to the challenge for eight people in a team of six and they take all the money and items from the other two. Next came another knight. He was the last player in this trial. Meanwhile, the time of the test came. The guys from the Black Scorpion were going to attack Six, and the knight and the main character were left in defense. On this floor, it was necessary to defeat a pack of poisonous dogs, which were dangerous monsters. However, the leader of the Black Scorpion did not even have time to attack, as Houston had already defeated the first dog. The main character noted that his teammates did not really want to engage in battle, preferring to stay in the background and watch the development of events. The man was surprised that the magic engineer was stronger than the knight class, thus emphasizing the unexpected variety of abilities among their group. However, the protagonist did not want to go into details of his power. He said that his heroic slots are just items, thus hiding his real abilities from outsiders. However, the Black Scorpion faction was still willing to stand up to Houston, demonstrating their determination and unwavering belief in their strength. Meanwhile, all the poison dogs were looking at the protagonist as they knew that he was the strongest here, penetrating inside his essence and sensing his potential. Houston also realized that the man was up to another terrible plan of action, feeling a kind of gloomy coating in the air that portended trouble. And indeed, the leader of the Black Scorpion mistook the guy for a ghost hunter who decided to go on a deadly hunt which added a new mystery to their confrontation. Houston didn't understand the man's explanation as to why he couldn't wear heroic items, remaining perplexed about this unusual forbidden secret. Meanwhile, the main character put his backpack next to him so as not to harm the drunkards. 
thus demonstrating his foresight and care for his own equipment. Houston took out his new magical gauntlet to show his strength, thus emphasizing his readiness for any trials and battles that might arise along the way. The main character struck a powerful blow. The magic glove lit up with blue flames. The poisonous dogs that were the opponents on this floor were very frightened, even though even Houston hadn't struck himself yet. Meanwhile, the Black Scorpion group was also not idle. They were preparing a dangerous maneuver. With the help of his magic gauntlet, the main character destroyed all the poisonous dogs. He also noted that this time his weapon is much more stable. However, as soon as Houston dealt with the poisonous dogs, the assassin attacked him from behind. But the main character parried the blow. Two portals opened. On the 13th and 10th floors, the criminals immediately paid attention to this. The main character blocked the path of all the members of the Black Scorpion because he still had a conversation with them. However, he didn't mind the eighth person of the night class going further in the tower. Houston suggested that the members of the Black Scorpion chat a little, and if there are any objections, talk about them now. As soon as one of the guys wanted to attack the main character, Houston easily threw him back. Therefore, the main character added another rule for their conversation. Now everyone can talk only when they answer questions. Houston looked very formidable in his new heroic level cape. One person from the Black Scorpion faction wanted to confront the main character. However, when he turned to his comrades, he saw only fear in their eyes. Houston calculated this act as a violation of the rules, so he used force against the guy. Then the main character asked everyone to take care of the victim, and the commander of the squad came forward. The man looked even more frightened, but he listened to Houston. The main character began to talk about the fact that he considers the player a bad person, but he was an example for his comrades. Houston decided to make this an excuse to offer the man friendship, which he was not very happy about. However, the commander of the Black Scorpion squad obeyed the main character. Houston knew that the man had hidden the gold somewhere on the 10th floor to make his life easier on the 20th level. According to the rules of the tower after the death of players, coins disappear with them, but gold can be transferred by trading. From the videos he watched, Houston learned that at the 20th level, the commander of the Black Scorpion squad regretted only that in a hurry, he did not have time to pick up the money accumulated from the 10th floor. The man has already realized that the main character is quite a strong player if he easily figured out his name. As a result, Houston found out that the bandits from the Black Scorpion had 12,000 coins in their possession. Also, the main character took away all the potions that the robbers had with them. Houston pretended that he was ready to let the bandits go further to the 10th floor. However, still he was not ready to forgive the robbers for their malicious crimes. After dealing with them, he used a healing potion to revive the criminals. The main character wanted to send them to the 14th floor, which was just for six people, thereby depriving the robbers of the opportunity to harm the rest of the players. As it turned out, Houston knew that the criminals had hidden a few more coins from him, which he was not ready to forgive them. Before going to the next level, the main character wanted to check the reward. The Black Scorpion Commander was sent by Houston to a portal on the 14th floor to pass the test with the team. As a result, the main character got an ordinary magic sphere and a thousand coins as a reward. Houston did not return to the 10th floor, as there was still a little room in his backpack for further travel. The 14th level consisted of a labyrinth of evil, the essence of which was to get to the center. On the floor of the main character, five people were already waiting for him who were from a foreign service. The man introduced himself as Robert. He also gave the names of other team members. Houston immediately realized that all five players are in the same group, which is quite experienced. So it is strange that they came to the test without a sixth person. According to Robert, one of their crew members was injured on the 13th floor, so they were forced to go to the 14th level without him. After the story, all the players described their classes and prepared to discuss the strategy of passing. You can start exploring the labyrinth from four sides, so everyone had to choose a starting point. It is also difficult to offer a working strategy as the maze changes every time, so there is no universal way to go through it. The protagonist decided that it would be safer for the rest of the players if he went separately from them. However, the members of Robert's company were overly concerned about his safety and did not want to let him go alone. Still, the main character managed to insist on his decision to go alone. Robert eventually gave in, realizing that he would not be able to change Huston's mind. However, he still offered him to take a healing potion with him, which the main character politely refused. 
Robert's party decided to start the test from the west, while Houston went from the north. The guys were worried about the main character. They decided to reach the center as soon as possible to help the guy. However, they were unlucky enough to meet the strongest monster of the labyrinth, which managed to take them by surprise. The members of the squad had already managed to despair, as their knights were left unarmed. But in the next moment, everyone heard a strange noise and saw a magical light. The story goes back a few minutes when the main character just entered the labyrinth. As soon as Houston took the hungry out of the backpack with his butt, they immediately pounced on the stones, eating them. Baron tasted the walls and invited the rest of his brethren to eat too. The main character has now also noticed that there are magic stones in the walls. However, their strength was not enough to nourish the magic gauntlet. Houston went further in search of the center of the dungeon, but suddenly a dungeon appeared in front of him. At the same moment, a sharp sound was heard somewhere from the west. The main character immediately realized that the rest of the guys were in danger. Laha rushed in that direction. It was clear that his strength had increased due to eating magic stones. Houston had no choice but to follow his friend. Laka really went directly to the side where Robert's squad was. At the last moment, the main character managed to hide it with his butt. It was obvious that the knights were a little embarrassed that their weapons were now unfit for battle due to meeting a monster. Then the main character asked them to wait a little, after which he quickly disappeared into the smoke. Houston warned Robert's squad not to risk their lives too much. In the meantime, he asked his butt to pave his way to the center so that he could finish the test faster. In the end, the cute creatures really made him a direct path to the pillar, which only needed to be touched to complete the passage. Before that, Houston hit it with his butt, and Robert's squad received a notification that the test was passed. As soon as the main character was at the meeting point, the man immediately came up and hugged him as he was grateful to him for saving his squad. Robert's entire team also thanked the guy for saving their lives. They went to the 10th floor to meet with their wounded comrade. When the main character was left alone, he had to check the rewards before going further. Unfortunately, this time the level of remuneration was not good enough. So the audience began to donate coins to Houston themselves. Everyone wanted the main character to go straight to the 15th floor, but the guy still had plans for the 10th level. Houston came to the Astro Empire's Traveler Control Center where he wanted to find out the location of the Black Scorpion clan. After the protagonist confirmed his identity, he was given all the necessary information and recorded information about his visit. After a short walk, the main character found himself in a dark alley, which was well suited to the leader of the Black Scorpion. Deciding that there was no point in knocking, Houston broke down the door as the clan no longer existed. The main character took his booty out of his backpack so that they could help him find the magic stone. After some time, Laha managed to find the hidden treasures. Houston was grateful for the help, so he shared mana stones with the priests. The main character went towards the portal. He was happy to find that at the moment he already had more than 80,000 coins, which would be a good investment in the future. On the 15th floor, Houston wants to learn the skills of knights in order to increase his physical stats and wear the Latanto set and the magic glove. However, as soon as the main character moved to the next floor, he found himself in a strange place. Usually all travelers appear at the Fountain of Trials in the center of the city. On the 15th floor was the city of Tarush, the northern lands where there were many strong warriors. The players had to complete the task in order to be able to go further. As soon as Houston went inside the tower, he found a man there who was much larger than the main character. The warrior introduced himself as Palaham. He squeezed Houston's hand with all his strength in a gesture of greeting. The man was surprised that the main character was not like all the players in the central square but he saw a warrior in the guy. Therefore, in the next second, Palaham delivered an unexpected kick to Houston's body. The main character did not have time to react, but Lotonto's cloak slightly reduced the damage from the blow. Houston did not expect such a meeting. He wanted to know from the man why he did it. Palaham is not very fond of travelers from the Empire. He considered it a dedication on his part. The protagonist was surprised that the man was holding back his power, as the effect of Latonto's set was completely neutralized. Palaham is Taruhi's strongest warrior. He hates the Empire for dying his son, who was still too young. The main character wanted to go further, but the man did not let him go. Since Palaham had already noticed that Houston did not look like immigrants from the Empire, he had a request for him. All the main character had to do was repeat after the man. In the next instant, Palaham shouted something like Luchant with such force that the main character's ears were blocked. 
The man was proud of himself. He invited Houston to repeat after himself. But before that, the guy wanted to know the meaning of a new word for himself. Palaham offered to follow him to show all the greatness of Taruhi. The main character had no reason to refuse the man. Sooner or later, Houston would have to face Palam, as he was one of the strongest warriors in the northern lands and could teach him how to control the knight's skill. The man went outside where he showed him a magic cannon, which is only being developed in the empire. He pointed to a large plant that was exuding vicious energy and said that it was getting bigger and bigger every day. When Palakam came closer, he noticed that this flower was guarded by a large number of monsters. The man knew that because of this plant, Taraka crashed over and over again. Palaham found it very interesting that the world was experiencing the same events over and over again. Sooner or later, the flower will gain strength and swallow up the northern lands, leading them to destruction. The protagonist was amazed at Palaham's calmness, as he had already survived countless deaths and still continued to confront the monsters. In the meantime, the man said that Houston's initiation was over, and he had successfully passed it. However, the protagonist was not going far from Palaham, as he still wanted to meet him to ask him to become a teacher. Huston's words made the man laugh a lot, as he had already met the same travelers who could not withstand even an hour of training. Before taking the main character as a student, he asked the guy to complete a task in order to get to know the city better. However, Houston was surprised to find that he already had a task. After reading the notification, he was horrified to find that he would not be able to leave the 15th floor until he extracted the heart of the flower. The main character was greatly shocked by this event. He understood that even all 50 travelers would not be able to complete this task. Palaham also noticed Houston's concern, but he could do nothing to help him. Meanwhile, the main character went to the Fountain of Trials, and the man noticed that the unexpected news made the guy calmer. Houston immediately realized that the administrator was behind such a difficult test. He had only 30 days left before the plant matured. The main character reached the city to find out about the tasks of other players. Suddenly, a local resident fell from a nearby building to the feet of the protagonist who wanted the travelers to help save the city. To preserve Tarua, the administrator created a belief that a savior would come and save everyone. This hope was the only source of psychic support. The main character did not know whether there would be such a person who could help the locals. Meanwhile, Houston reached the Fountain of Trials, where all the travelers gathered. Two players were standing at the fountain, who were just missing the 50th participant in the test. The main character first asked about the traveler's tasks, to which he received a negative answer. These words upset Houston, which meant that all the players were only bystanders. To attract more viewers, the main character agreed to accept a request for friendship. Houston was at a loss, but first he needed to return to Palaham. The main character came to the house of a man. It was a huge mansion that was built for many centuries to come. In front of the entrance, Houston was met by a dog that began to bark at the sight of the guy. Palaham, who loved his faithful dog, came out of the house, and the man was also interested in whether he was able to deal with his difficulties. The main character was about to ask to become an apprentice again, but the warrior interrupted him, inviting him to dinner. In Palaham's house, the food was cooked by his wife, who looked like a very nice woman. The woman was a wonderful housewife who prepared a wonderful dinner. During the meal, Palaham's wife became angry with her husband for spending a lot of time in the tower of the castle. Therefore, the man quickly finished his dinner so as not to quarrel with the woman he loved. The main character met Palaham on the street with a dog. He said that his family is the only thing that helps him continue to live and fight monsters. The man wanted to know if Houston considers the residents of Taruka to be pathetic people, to which the main character replied that this was not so, the guy knew that this was their only opportunity not to go crazy. Palaham still can't understand what the protagonist is thinking, but he's sure that Houston is a good person. The man offered the main character to spend the night in his house and in the morning to start training. In normal times, Houston would prefer to rent a room closer to the Fountain of Trials, but at this point, he shouldn't waste time commuting. The next morning, Palaham called the protagonist for training without giving him time to wash or eat since in his opinion, all this makes sense only after physical training. The man also insisted that Houston take off his cape because this is the only way he can show his inner strength. Palaham appreciated the physical characteristics of the main character, saying that he should be popular among girls, which embarrassed the guy. In the next second, without warning, the warrior struck. Houston managed to dodge. 
The protagonist was surprised that Palaham's training could lead to injuries. Meanwhile, the man continued to attack Houston. He hit him in the leg, but the guy managed to soften the blow with the help of magical protection. Such control over abilities pleased Palaham. He became more and more convinced that the main character was not an ordinary traveler at all. The man's next blow was supposed to hit Houston's head, but he managed to defend himself with his hand. But still, the blow was so strong that after it, the whole body of the main character trembled. After a few more minutes of training, Houston fell to the ground exhausted. He received a notification that his Taruhi martial arts skill had reached the first level, thereby reviving his desire to continue his exhausting training. There are two types of skills in the tower. The main character got a passive skill that does not consume his mana or aura. All of these events caused Houston to rise again to continue testing himself. The protagonist wanted to try out his newly acquired skill, which helped him increase his speed and endurance. Palaham also noticed the changes in Houston. He believed that the guy was worthy of being called the warrior of Taruhi. However, this was not enough to defeat the man. The main character still has a lot to learn. As it turned out, Houston's first punch was a distraction, after which he tried to hit Palaham with a magic-enhanced leg. But the man did not appreciate the deceptive plan of the main character anyway. The guy's strength was not enough to defeat the warrior. After a few minutes of training, Houston found that his skill level had reached level two. After breakfast, Palaham and the main character were standing on the street. The man wanted to know about the task received by the guy. The warrior was able to determine from Houston's mood that the guy got an impossible task, which means that he must destroy the heart of the body. The main character saw no point in deceiving Palaham, so he told the truth. The man did not dissuade Houston from performing this task and offered to visit the plant in order to recognize the enemy's face. The main character agreed to this test on one condition. They would return as soon as it became dangerous. Palaham went home to get ready for the road. Meanwhile, the man's dog approached Houston. The priest jumped out of the backpack as they began to be jealous of their friend for another living being. Meanwhile, Palaham came out of the house, who was surprised that the main character had perfume. Houston did not dwell on this issue. He decided to find out about the name of the dog, to which the guy found out that the dog's name is Lachanta. A few hours earlier, two men in an inn had discussed that Palaham had taken in a traveler. One of them was called Leto. He was also one of the strongest warriors of Taruha, and the second guy was called Karun. He was a friend and assistant of the red-haired man. Karun said that Palaham not only sheltered the traveler, but also sparred with him, which does not look much like him. These words made Leto go to Palasham's house to get to know the man's guest better. When Leto approached, he saw that the main character did not behave at all like a native of the empire. His movements were more like a warrior Taruhi. Leto fell asleep for a while while Palachum and Houston were eating breakfast in the house and did not wake up until they went outside. The man decided to stop hiding. He went into the inner territory of the house to say hello to everyone. It was obvious that Leto did not have a very good opinion of the main character as she felt his not very friendly mood. Karun was more favorably disposed. He found the butt to be very cute creatures. Palaham was glad that the guys themselves came to his house, since he was just looking for people to go to the heart of the body. Without hesitation, Leto agreed to this little journey. Karun was a little frightened. Only before that, the man wanted to test the skills of the main character and show the greatness of Taruhi's warriors. Since Leto and Houston would be going to take the approach together, they needed to go through a practice fight to start trusting each other. The protagonist did not oppose the duel, as he could use Leto's approval for further actions in the city. As a weapon, Houston used an axe from the set of the master of the Seven Snakes, Lutonto. The fact that the protagonist uses the same weapons as the Taraki warriors made the man even angrier. Leto still considered Houston an arrogant inhabitant of the Empire. He was the first to strike at his opponent. Still, the main character was able to repel the first attack of the man, even if he managed to do it with great effort. However, the very next moment during a counterattack, Houston was left without his axe. The main character did not want to use the power of the cloak so that the warriors would not consider him weak, but the guy did not want to lose either. Houston suggested stopping there, but Leto was of the opposite opinion. However, in the next second, the main character's cloak wrapped around the man's neck, releasing sharp spikes. The fight was interrupted by Palashim, who declared Houston the winner of this fight. Leto also admitted his defeat, 
and the protagonist said that he would not have achieved the advantage without his equipment. After some more time, all four men packed their bags and went to the center of the body. Their path lay through a snow-covered forest, which was quite difficult to get through. On the way, they were also attacked by ice giants, of which there were quite a few. Everyone prepared for a fight. It was common for the warriors of Taraka to encounter monsters in the forest. Karen, who looked rather weak, now also showed himself to be a strong man. He hammered in the pegs that enclosed the battle area. Palaham turned towards the protagonist, leaving Karen and Leto alone to fight the ice giants. Indeed, this duo performed well, as Leto defeated monsters on the first line of attack. And Karun finished off the remaining ice giants who managed to pass through the warrior's axe, thereby achieving balance in this battle. However, one of the monsters still got to the main character. He was able to defeat him with the help of his cloak. Several more ice giants were near Houston. The guy was already preparing to fight back. But Palisham, standing nearby, managed to be the first to strike at the monsters, thereby catching the main character by surprise. After a while, the ice giants realized that they were losing strength to humans, so they retreated so as not to lose even more pack members. As Karun later learned, the ice giants became aggressive after Palaham harmed the heart of the body. The plant needs about a year before it becomes a full-fledged individual. According to what the main character saw, the flower will take about seven months to fully bloom. But the heart of the body will absorb the city and all the inhabitants earlier as Palaham continues to attack with the plant over and over again, reducing its growth time. After all, the main character was sure that the man knew about the consequences of his actions. He asked Karun if the rest of Taraka knew about Houston's actions, to which he could not get a clear answer. In the meantime, Palaham began to tell him why it was not so cold and there was not so much snow in the northern lands. The secret lies in the fact that there is a warm stone in the city which rests deep under the Taraka, thanks to which there is no snow in the city. After a while, the guys went up to the center of the body. What Houston saw made him horrified. All the land around the plant was uninhabitable. Only the flower bloomed in this place. While the main character was looking at the heart of the body, Leto and Karun set up camp nearby. Palaham, without a moment's hesitation, went straight to the roots of the organism. The main character did not really want to repeat the man's feat, but the warrior convinced him that the enemy needed to be studied as much as possible. Touching the body, the main character felt the pulsation and vital energy flowing through the plant. Meanwhile, Palakum warmed up to try to destroy the monster once again. The blow was so strong that the heart of the body was almost completely destroyed. But after a second, the flower instantly fully recovered, which greatly frightened Houston. To all this, Palaham only advised the protagonist to stop trying to survive in this level. After the man's blow, an incomprehensible creature flew out of the very heart of the body. From these black drops, demonic creatures crawled out, which everyone called cleaners. The main character, like everyone from the new squad, prepared for a new battle. Houston could not simply return, as the heart of the body would continue to develop rapidly. The main character climbed a plant. He took out a magic glove to try to complete the task at the moment. Houston wanted to strike during the opening of the bud, because that was when the monster was most unprotected. However, the power of the magic gauntlet was not enough to overcome the heart of the body. But the main character was not ready to give up so easily. He revealed the core with the help of a cloak. In the next instant, the monsters spawned by the flower reappeared from the center. So Houston knew he had to hurry. The main character climbed inside the flower to be closer to his heart. He had already managed to say goodbye to his viewers as he was not sure that he would be able to survive. However, Houston began to lose faith in salvation because the magic gauntlet was too weak. In the next instant, the priests who did not want their friend to die crawled out of the spatial backpack. The cute creatures were upset that the main character behaved recklessly. However, as those born from the fragments of the world tree, they had the opposite energy to demons, so the flower caused them many times more damage. Such a selfless act of butt forced the main character to come to his senses and continue to fight for his survival. But in the next moment, Houston felt his strength leave him completely. The main character was completely exhausted, so he fell into the abyss of a demonic heart. A few minutes later, Houston woke up lying on the bed next to the fire. He turned to the opposite side and noticed that the butts looked very bad, as they had absorbed too much demonic energy. Meanwhile, at the fire, Leto asked the commander why the man told about the sunstone. This conversation was overheard by the protagonist, so he stopped pretending to be asleep and jumped up to listen carefully to Palaham. 
but the man did not plan to answer Houston's questions so quickly. Before that, he invited the guy for a snack. As it turned out, at the time when the main character lost consciousness inside the monster, it was the warrior who got the guy. After Houston had a snack, Palaham answered the protagonist's question about the size of the sunstone. Since the man did not know where the stone was, Houston decided that he needed to reach the most powerful man in the northern lands, the queen. The protagonist showed a magic gauntlet with which he wanted to fight the plant once again. Karun said that 12000 bloodstones are needed in terms of strength to compare with the sun. Houston immediately realized that his body might not be able to withstand such force. However, he must do everything possible to try to complete the task and help Taruha. Palaham listened attentively to the main character. He agreed to the palace before the news of this. Houston wanted to relieve the suffering of his butt a little before leaving, so he gave them a magic stone, but they did not react to it in any way. When the party returned to Palaham's house, Karun and Leto decided to begin preparations for the final battle, and Palaham handed the main character permission to meet with the queen. Houston was helped to reach the palace by Karun, who noticed that the main character was walking ahead of him as if he had already been to this castle. The guy realized that he had betrayed himself with his behavior, but he had little time before Tarucha completely collapsed. While the main character was going to see the queen, he asked for help from the audience, as he noticed that they stopped donating to him as soon as he received an impossible task. Before the meeting, the guards stopped Karun because only Houston could enter the room. The main character planned to show the audience that he still has a chance to pass this test. As a result, Houston entered the royal hall alone. He greeted Her Majesty with a bow. In front of the main character sat the Queen of the Northern Lands. The guy immediately expressed his request that he want to get the sunstone. Queen Kale wanted to know why Houston would need the stone. The main character told the truth that he wants to defeat a demonic organism with the help of a sunstone. However, the queen found Houston's actions pointless. He had one last chance to explain his idea before he lost his head. Houston didn't look terrified, even though his life was on the verge of life and death. The main character said that he is aware of who the queen's son is. Hearing these words, Her Majesty began to worry a little. She decided to ask the guards to leave the hall. Since Houston was short on time, he immediately began to tell him that the Astroud Empire had information about the Sunstone. And the Emperor himself is the son of Queen Kyle, who was sent to the Cold North for political reasons. Apparently, the Queen realized that the main character knows a lot. However, she saw no reason to help Houston, except that she wanted to deal with him here so that the information would not spread to the Northern Lands. Then in response to these threats of Queen Kyle, the main character gave a signal to his viewers that he was helped from them. He also told Her Majesty that his stream was now on, to which the woman shouted that she wanted to hear in person. A user named Liubov bought a voice message in which she insulted the queen. Fortunately, the text was not translated, so the main character was able to get out of it. The queen realized that she should not deal with Houston at this point, because after rebirth, she would have a lot of problems related to the fact that her blood ties would be revealed. The main character returned alone to Palaham's house, where a man was already waiting for him. As Queen Kala said, the Sunstone is in the warrior's house, so the protagonist was surprised that Palham did not tell him everything at once. Before Houston went to the room where the Sunstone was located, he checked on his friends to make sure they didn't get worse. Palaham asked the main character to turn off the stream before showing the location of the stone. Houston, when I went inside, I saw a large library with numerous books on various topics. Palahama was able to use his boundless power to lift one of the regiments, behind which a secret passage was hidden. Behind the wall was a staircase that led to the basement. The light was so strong that no lamps were needed for lighting. Palaham got the main character a sunstone, asking if the guy would regret it, to which Houston replied that he would do everything possible to defeat the demonic organism. A few minutes later, after the main character turned back on the stream, Palaham asked him about his future plans. As soon as he learned that Houston was not going to back down, he wanted to follow him. Because even if you defeat the demonic organism, more monsters will appear because of it, which will try to destroy Taruha. The main character went to prepare for battle, and in the meantime, Palacham called Karun. He told him to gather all the warriors of the northern lands to start a war against the monsters. The queen also received information about the beginning of a full-scale meeting, but she did not believe in the success of this operation. 
Two players who were passing the 15th floor with the main character were discussing tasks. The girl noticed that in the past few days, the warriors had stopped giving them difficult tasks. The guy, meanwhile, started his stream to find out from other players what they know. His spectators told him to go to the wall of the tower on the side where the demonic organism is located. When he arrived there, he found that the plant had already almost fully grown. The traveler also heard that all the warriors of Taraka were starting to go somewhere. Their footsteps sounded like thunder, filling the air with tension and anticipation. He offered his spectators to pay him in gold to follow the soldiers. In the next instant, a blue-colored pillar shattered in the place where the demonic organism had recently been. Meanwhile, on one of the upper floors, a guy entered the girl's room. On the sofa lay a traveler with the nickname Liubov, who was not happy that her room was broken into. Her friend had invited the girl to a meeting with the head of the clan as he wanted to discuss the changes on the 10th floor because he didn't like them. However, user Lubov said in a rude way that the guy should get out of her room. The other player did not argue with her. He asked to contact him when the girl changed her mind. A user under the nickname Lyubov continued to watch Houston's stream. She was very worried about his safety. Meanwhile, the main character made his way through, he did through the trees towards the demonic organism. He tried to move as quietly as possible. As soon as Houston came to the plant, he found that it was almost dawn. An unexpected sound made the main character distract from his thoughts and actions. It was Karun who followed the guy. His appearance broke the silence and attracted the attention of the main character. He brought with him the buttocks that Houston had left at the Palom house. The man did this because the cute creatures themselves were trying to get to the main character. Karun helped them do it faster. Looking at the dedication of his friends, Houston realized that he was not doing much for them since he was only using them for the purpose of his survival. At this point, Karun said goodbye to the main character, wishing him good luck in this test. Houston put his butt in his spatial backpack and came out from behind his hiding place. He prepared for battle just to protect the demonic organism. Several monsters came out. With the help of his cloak of the master of the seven snakes, Lotonto, the main character was able to cope with a large number of monsters. With each blow, he made his way closer to the demonic organism. As soon as he reached the plant, he immediately took out a magic gauntlet to finally deal with the monster. Drunkards crawled out of the backpack, which took the protagonist by surprise, as he did not expect that they would risk their lives for him. However, Houston did not resist their help. He pointed the magic glove towards the open center of the demonic organism. One unfinished monster suddenly appeared behind him, but it was too late to harm the main character. The story goes back a few minutes, where Palaham gathered all the warriors of the northern lands for the final battle. However, his story about the importance of this event was interrupted by the head of the Blue Knight Warriors. All her brethren supported the girl's skepticism about the success of this battle. They lost hope that they would be able to resist the eternal rebirth of their world. Hearing this, Palaham laughed loudly, which made everyone pay attention to him. Laughing, the man only said in disappointment, that he did not know that now the warriors of the northern lands have turned into cowards. Not far from the meeting of soldiers stood a traveler who was watching a flower. Right before his eyes, a deafening rumble was heard, and a blue pillar rose into the sky, which lit up the entire area with its radiance. And then from the place where the demonic organism had once grown, several dark spots suddenly flew out, like black clouds, condensed and formed terrible shadows. These were all monsters born of a flower that, when the protagonist attacked it, emitted its sinister children into the world. The traveler realized that this floor had become too dangerous, so he was going to go into the portal. Meanwhile, Palaham prepared for a confrontation with the monsters. He was not going to give up. The traveler was also unable to leave the 15th floor, as his curiosity was too great. As soon as the guy returned to his observation deck, he noticed that in the place where the demon flower used to stand, there was now a person completely covered in white cloth. Meanwhile, the main character is unconscious, on the verge of life and death. Suddenly, his body begins to burn from the inside. His body temperature rises. A few moments later, everything stopped, and the main character was in his subconscious. Next to him, he noticed a crying child who outwardly resembled him from childhood. Houston ceased to understand the events that were happening around him. Suddenly, the space around him breaks into small pieces and the creature that looks like a butt stops next to him. At this moment, the main character wakes up and jumps up from his seat. He finds his butt next to him, which to his deepest regret, 
has greatly decreased in size. Houston does not understand why his entire body is emitting a white glow. He turns to the audience to find out all the events that happened while he was unconscious. Subscribers to his stream talked about what happened after the main character shot a sunstone with a magic glove. Part of the damage was taken by Lotonto's cloak, and the priests covered the main character with their wool. However, after that, the cute creatures began to slowly fade away. But one of them ate the sunstone to restore energy. He shared the mana he had accumulated with the rest of his friends, who in turn helped Houston heal his wounds. While the main character listened to the audience, he was surrounded by monsters that appeared after the destruction of the demon flower. Meanwhile, Palaham and the rest of the warriors dealt with most of the monsters that had escaped. They watched as an unknown man in a white robe fought with demons. Palaham remembered the legend of a hero of the northern lands named Lakanta. The men saw similarities in the situation. The head of the Blue Knight warriors only laughed at the fact that Palacham still believed in legends. However, the men did not listen to her. They continued to discuss the facts they knew about the great warrior. Their minds filled only with what they thought they needed to tell each other. Meanwhile, Houston was fighting monsters. He noticed that his strength and speed had increased a lot. But no matter how long the main character fought with demonic monsters, there were no fewer of them. They continued to appear from dark corners and attack him from all sides. It got to the point where the monsters surrounded Houston, forming a ring around him, leaving him little room to maneuver and survive. Karun wanted to help the great warrior Lachanta, but Palaham stopped him as he did not want to offend the hero. In the next instant, another blue-colored pillar appeared, which incinerated all the monsters in the area. Kurnu tried to protect himself from the flying fragments, and Palaham continued to contemplate everything that was happening. He noticed that in the center of the blue column was a man completely covered in white robes. After the glow stopped, Palaham prepared to go to the center of all events. He reached the crater, where the entire land was completely destroyed. The remnants of mana still smoldered below. Palaham wanted to talk to an unknown creature dressed in a white robe. However, everyone she saw was only the protagonist, who was lying in the middle of the destruction unconscious. A few hours later, Houston woke up in someone's house. He was dressed in someone else's clothes. Fortunately, next to him, the main character found the butt, who were happy to meet him. Houston's last memories were of his battles with demonic monsters. Palaham went into the main character's room, carrying a plate of food in his hand, as he heard that the guy had woken up. After the meal, Houston learned that he had almost single-handedly defeated all the monsters. The guy was very surprised by this. And during this time, Palaham managed to make sure that his student was actually the great warrior of Lakanta from the legends. After some time, Houston continued to study his new abilities. He also decided to check how the mana was circulating in his body, as he felt that the power that had been overwhelming him all this time was gone. However, as soon as Houston focused on his inner feelings and the energy that flowed in his heart, he became extremely ill. The priests of Gaul, who had been watching the protagonist all this time, were now very alarmed, seeing how his condition suddenly worsened. But the guy calmed them down. A suspicious noise was also heard by Palacham, suddenly bursting into Houston's room. His excitement was evident on his face as he saw what was happening to the guy. The protagonist was upset that he could not use his mana like magicians do. Houston shared his feelings with Palaham, as he had to find a way to remedy the situation. Outside the warrior's house, a large crowd of players crowded who wanted to communicate with the main character. But Leto was not going to let them inside. Suddenly a noise was heard from the courtyard, and the player paid attention to it. Palaham and Houston appeared from the house, looking for Karun to talk to him. Karun listened carefully to the main character's problem with the circulation of mana in the body and offered two options for a possible solution to the problem. One of them is to unblock the mana circulation paths, and the other is to resolve the conflict between the two energies, since the priest gave the main character the sunstone. According to Karen's assumption, the protagonist's body suppresses a strong mani for the sake of its own survival. Therefore, Houston decided to try to release the excess energy since sooner or later the uncontrolled energy will come out on its own. The main character tried to focus on mana, the energy that is concentrated in the heart, filling it with strength and power. However, as soon as Houston began to succeed, he began to feel the energy of the sunstone begin to absorb his body. Kurin and Palisham were worried about the protagonist's condition, as he did not look healthy. To alleviate his condition, Houston was forced to release excess energy. 
The protagonist therefore decided to hit with a strong mana release to alleviate his suffering. The impact was so strong that a pillar of light broke through the ceiling, after which Houston lost consciousness. He woke up in the evening, lying in his bed, the stars shining from the night sky. As it turned out, the main character slept for a day and a half, which was how long it took him to restore his internal resources. Houston first asked about the safety of his friends after waking up, as he was worried that his blow could hurt someone. Curran was glad that no one was hurt. Only Palaham was scolded by his wife for the damage to his property. Meanwhile, on the 20th floor, one of the users was angry that he was unable to contact Houston. This traveler had been following the guy's stream from the 15th floor, but had not received any useful information from him. The guy realized that most likely he was not the only person who began to show interest in Houston and that there could be even more people around. After the events on the 15th floor, the protagonist began to be followed by even more people, and his actions and successes became the focus of attention throughout the player community. At the same time, on the 70th floor, the user Lyubov was driving with a team member to meet with the head of the clan. She didn't really want to go to this place. At the same time, the guys were arguing about what the changes in the tower would lead to. Upon arrival, the players found that the head of the clan, Hippocritus, was already waiting for them at a table set for three, ready to discuss important issues. The man wanted to talk about the changes that had taken place on the fifth floor. He knew that one of the newcomers was behind it. Therefore, he asked a user under the nickname Lyubov to understand the situation in order to find out what consequences this could have for the clan and the tower as a whole. The girl did not really want to take on this case, as she was worried about Houston. However, even with her will, she could not resist the authority of the clan leader, so she was forced to agree with him. The man didn't want any trouble since they had almost finished the 70th floor. At this time, the main character, lying in his bed, did not want to open his eyes, preferring to stay in the world of darkness and peace, where he could immerse himself in his thoughts. He thought that after the test on the 15th floor, each participant would know who was the best, as a rating board appeared. Initially, the main character wanted to get to it, but now he was of the opposite opinion, because many will start following him. Houston also decided to continue developing the Taruhi warrior skill to become stronger. He came to Palaham to ask him for training again, as there were five days left until the end of the trial. The man did not mind training with the main character. He decided not to delay the start of classes and started training right away. Already this time, the main character was ready for the swift blow of his teacher. He stood up to start training. The looks from the outside did not bother him much, since sooner or later they would find out about him. All five days, the main character trained with Palaham, gradually improving his skills. After these few days, Houston was able to increase the ability of the Tarika warrior to the fifth level. In the evening of the last day, the main character was sitting in his room, eating magic stones from the guy's reserves. Before leaving for the next floors, Houston decided that it would be right to open the award now. From the chest, the main character took out a bag of coins, a rare spatial backpack of a larger volume, and the tunic of the master of the seven snakes, Lotonto. The essence of this shirt was that under the ability of this object to predict time, the bodies of other creatures begin to double. As soon as the protagonist put the Lotonto shirt on himself and focused on its ability, he was suddenly seized by a strange malaise. Indeed, all living things around him began to double. But thanks to Houston's will and perseverance, he managed to pull himself together and cope with this new skill. However, after a second, the ability again took over the protagonist's body, making him feel weak and helpless in the face of its influence. The very next day, Houston was still trying to control Latonto's shirt, and each time it was a little easier. He was walking along Taruka and noticed that the city was strangely empty, as if life had suddenly left its streets and houses, which caused a feeling of extraordinary anxiety and bewilderment in the main character. A crowd was waiting at the Fountain of Trials in Houston, all of them warriors from the northern lands who were seeing off their savior on his journey. Among all these people, of course, were Palasham, Leto, and Karun, who were happy to see Houston. Palaham wished the protagonist good luck in his passage, assuring them that they would all remember him and his exploits for a long time. Houston was deeply grateful for such a farewell, and his heart was filled with gratitude with joy to such an extent that tears of joy came to his eyes. The main character was pleased with the work done. The journey through Tariki was both long and short. Houston was sad to say goodbye to the harsh northern lands, 
but he needed to focus on the other floors. After a while, one of the beginners had risen to the 15th level. Viewers of his stream advised him to walk to the tower to show him something interesting. However, once the guy climbed to the observation tower, he did not find the demonic organism that had been standing there before. All he managed to find were the amusing residents of the city of Taru, who were singing songs about the great warrior Lachanta. At this time, the main character's path continued on the 10th floor, where he decided to go down first. Before entering the main territory of the city, all players were examined. They were people from the Hippocrates Guild who were looking for Houston for some reason. The main character decided that he did not want to make a fuss, so he needed to try to quietly pass by. As soon as Houston finished passing the 15th floor, as expected, his name was on the first line of the leaderboard, so many players were interested in the guy. The main character decided not to tempt fate, so he immediately went to the portal to the 16th floor. The next trial was a combination of the third and fourth levels. It was for 30 people. Fortunately, the required number of travelers was recruited at once. One from the guild came in a composition of 29 people. The squad leader told everyone to prepare for the test. Meanwhile, he headed for Houston. However, as soon as the man approached the main character, it seemed strange to him that the guy did not answer his questions. So he took out a weapon. In the next second, the test began. So the statue behind Houston became active. Everyone was afraid for the safety of the main character, but he was able to easily cut the statue into pieces with the help of his new skill. The head of the squad, whose name was Bren, was greatly discouraged by Houston's abilities, and in surprise, he could not utter a word. The protagonist did not stop at one statue, continuing to move forward while studying the acquired abilities. However, there were still many level 16th challenges ahead of him that the guy had to overcome. When the squad members followed the protagonist, they found that most of the traps had already been defused. Bren, deep in thought, believed that Houston was probably able to defeat the statue based on his knowledge of the statue's weaknesses he had acquired on the third floor. However, despite his musings, he couldn't find an explanation for how the protagonist was able to get through the freezing solution that was supposed to stop him. After that, the man looked at the ceiling where he found traces of Houston's movement which caused him even more questions about the behavior of the main character. But the unusual movements of the protagonist still remained strange for Bren. The party continued their way to the center of the dungeon, and as they advanced, they managed to notice that all the monsters they encountered along the way had already been defeated. At the end of the journey, the main character was already waiting for them, who was in anticipation of the completion of the test, which was almost completed. Bren realized that Houston was trying to show his worth with his behavior, while the guy learned the name of the guild with which he was on the same level. Realizing that the clan is called Han Shin, the main character turns to the guys with a request for a favor. On the 10th floor, guild member Hippocrates asked Bren for permission to inspect the team. However, the guy's words angered the man, as he did not consider it necessary to cooperate with another guild. The request voiced by the main character was the desire to go with the Han Shin Guild to the territory of the 10th floor. The guy, realizing the significance of his request, tried to offer Bren 50,000 gold for cooperation, hoping that this would convince him to agree. However, with these words, he angered the man even more, since no amount could make him betray his principles. Another guy from the Hypocrite Guild apologized for his friend. He didn't want to quarrel with the Han Shin Guild at the moment. The main character was grateful to Bren for his help. He also arranged a meeting with him with the head of the clan. The Hanshin clan's goal is the safety of the players. However, they were rebuffed on the 30th floor because they used two cruel methods of fighting. On the other side of the scales was the Hippocrates Guild, which tried to upgrade the tower by any means possible. The main character did not plan to join any of the guilds, but he wanted to use their confrontation to his advantage. Meanwhile, in one of the factory complexes of the Hippocrates Guild on the 50th floor, where mighty machines work tirelessly to create magical items and artifacts. A user under the nickname Lyubov, whose name was Rachel, visited the Enterprise. The girl wanted to know the schedule of deliveries and daily disposal. The head of the plant complex did not understand why she needed it. Suddenly, one of the users burst into the door of the complex, demanding to hand over the head to him. Rachel immediately reacted to the emergency. She asked to start evacuating workers. The guy was looking around the room, he was disappointed that he was going down the tower while the head was not at the Enterprise. However, in the next second, he noticed Rachel, who was standing not far from him, 
The guy's name was Austin. He was a devoted viewer of the main character's streams. Without hesitation for a second more, the guy rushed at the girl with his fist, forcing her to start dodging. Rachel told the player that his actions were breaking the agreement between the travelers. So she was able to understand from the guy's reaction that he used to be a member of the hypocrite guild. However, the guy was clearly not happy with his previous participation in this clan, as he was very disappointed in their methods. The player wanted revenge on the guild for chasing Houston, so he used magic to try to deal with Rachel with one punch. However, when she heard the last words of the guy, the girl said only one word, drink. The guy stopped a few centimeters from Rachel. He could not believe that he would meet another viewer of Houston's dreams here. Meanwhile, the main character went to the workshop on the 10th floor, where he had already tried the services once. This time, Houston asked to occupy the workshop for a few days to fix the magic glove, which had a special meaning for him on his journey. The guy noticed several non-standard nodes in the mana nodes, so he wanted to help the main character, but Houston was sure that he had made the glove suitable for himself. The master was still a little worried about the safety of the main character, but did not try to convince him. Meanwhile, Houston was about to go to the next floor, but remembered that he had to pay off his debts before leaving the 10th level. The main character had a meeting with the head of the Hanshin clan, Luis. The man offered the guy a cup of tea, but he refused, thereby showing his wariness. Luis has said that he has heard that the protagonist was falsely accused by the Hippocrates Guild, but he does not believe this to be true. Houston saw no point in lying to a man with whom he hoped to continue to cooperate in the future, so he said that he did not belong to the hypocrite clan. Louis may not have much physical strength, but he can manipulate information well. The man confirmed the thoughts of the main character, giving his real name and saying that he knew what happened on the 15th floor. Houston, again, did not hide his merits, because the truth will soon be revealed. The main character offered Louis a deal. He had a lot of delicious ingredients in the storage, and the head of the guild was a good chef, so he could cook interesting dishes from them. Hearing this, Louis laughed, so he suggested what seemed to him the best solution to their dialogue. The man asked the main character to go through the 17th floor to prove his importance. The essence of the next level was to play a shadow game, which was much more interesting during the second and subsequent playthroughs. The main character was not going to refuse, since he would still have to pass this test to get to the 20th floor, it would only be a plus to gain Luis's trust at the same time. A girl in a white robe walked frightened and careful in the dark. Her name was Greta. Unexpectedly, she received a notification that the challenge was about to begin, and stores and streams would be disabled, and other players appeared next to her. The task of the 17th floor was to find a shadow among six participants, a person who pretends to be someone else, or to sacrifice three players from the group. One of the guys, after getting acquainted with the members of the challenge, asked each of them to ask one question. However, the rest of the participants were not very happy with this scenario. Since there were six distortions in a person, it will be difficult to determine who is lying. The main character also noted that their clothes had changed and all personal belongings had disappeared. He was worried about the safety of his butt. At the moment the challenge begins, a statue appears to which you can ask questions. If she smiles, it will be a positive answer. One of the girls offered to choose three victims for the statue by lot. For such a disregard for the lives of other people, the guy wanted to hit the girl as he was angry at her behavior. However, the traveler was not at all frightened, since anyone who first begins to use physical force against another participant will become a victim of the floor. The guy also knew about this rule, so at the last moment he stopped and went away from his irritant. The girl decided to continue the pressure on the other participants. She asked Greta why she was so hesitant about her class as a magical engineer. Greta could not stand the pressure on herself. She told that she heard from the players that there was a guy who created a strong magic gauntlet, so she changed her night class. Hearing these words, the main character was a little surprised. He approached the girl, which greatly frightened her with his unexpected approach. Greta continued to argue with her accuser, saying that in fact this participant was the most suspicious among them. Another girl, agreeing with Greta, stressed that the lilac-haired member is ballast for the team, and that in such a situation, her presence becomes a problem for everyone. Now it's time for this traveler to feel for herself what it means when no one believes you, and how it affects your position in the group. However, the main character intervened in the skirmish between the participants. He wanted to use his right to ask one question to the statue. 
The girl asked the guy if he was going to ask a standard question, such as whether the shadow was a man or a woman, since the gender could also change. If you ask if the shadow is a woman, the statue will say no if the shadow was originally a man. So questions about what is easy to distort will not help find the traitor. At the words of the main character, one of the guys concerned about the situation suggested as a last resort to choose one victim so that the rest of the participants could survive. However, Houston believed that they should try all the options before the test was over, because otherwise they would be fighting for survival. The rest of the members also agreed with the main character, as they didn't have much time before the end of the level. So Houston walked over to the statue and asked her if the shadow had changed from male to female. Meanwhile, the shadow was worried that the main character would reveal him, even though she had made a large number of changes to her own body. The statue smiled back at the main character, which meant that the guy was right. Therefore, Houston already knew who the shadow was, because even after changing gender, the person's habits remained the same. The main character considered Greta a traitor because he knew that they had already met before. In fact, the girl was Brian, with whom Houston fought together on the sixth floor. Greta's habits and characteristics remained the same. She was also originally a knight and used a spear. And before the tower, she was a personal trainer and knew about the existence of a magic gauntlet. The girl who had a degree in psychology said that Greta had a strange reaction when Houston approached her. The participant was very worried. She was upset that everything was so easy to believe in the words of the main character, especially since so far only half of the shadow is known. Then the main character offered to ask one more question so as not to start a witch hunt. Everyone agreed with this. Houston approached the statue again. He asked if he had met the shadow on the sixth floor. To this, he received a positive answer again, and the main character decided that there was no point in continuing to ask additional questions. Greta, in turn, completely despaired of justifying herself, realizing that she did not want to die on this ordeal. However, the other participants were already against her, so no one wanted to come to the rescue. The others even began to ignore her. They were ready to arrange a vote because there was not much time left until the end of the test. Houston also voted, like all the participants, against Greta, thus the decision was unanimous. In the next second, the statue activated to take the girl with it. The test of the 17th floor was passed, as always. Two portals opened. All the participants immediately went further, thanking the main character beforehand. However, only a girl with a degree in psychology stayed with Houston. Before leaving, smiling sweetly, she said that the main character did a good job passing the test. At first, the main character did not understand what the traveler was talking about, so he asked her to clarify her words. The girl happily replied to him that the viewers from the chat asked her to say this. Meanwhile, on the 10th floor, Louis was informed that Houston had passed the test, but the man had already managed to find out everything before the commander arrived. Luis asked his friend what he knew about the chaos on the 20th floor, but the man told him that he was busy with a new group led by a schoolgirl. Also, the head of the guild mentioned the recent events that took place on the 10th floor. All the players who were on it on the same day were moved to an unusual space, after which the territory of the 10th floor was no longer the same. This event was called a blackout, and Luis believed that the changes occurred through the fault of the main character. For the first time in a long time, guild leader Hanshin was having fun, as in his opinion, there is nothing more boring when life goes according to expectations. Returning to the 10th floor, the main character found that all the members of the hypocrite clan who had been chasing him for a long time had disappeared. Unexpectedly, Houston received a donation from the user Love, which had been absent from his viewers for a long time. Meanwhile, the main character came to meet Luis again. He already knew that the man was following his progress on the test. To each of the participants of the 17th floor, the man seated the viewer who told about the results. Luis asked the protagonist who he really is and why he knows so much about the tower. To find out, Houston once again offered to make a deal. However, Luis was sure that now they were on equal terms, only the main character reacted too calmly to his words. The man offered to talk about the trials of the 18th and 19th levels, but Houston was already looking like an experienced traveler of the tower. Therefore, Louis, wanting to personally find out how much the main character knows about the tower, decided to approach it from the other side. However, Houston was still too calm. He replied that he knew enough to make a deal. 
After another hour of negotiations, Louis realized that he could no longer extract any useful information from him and agreed to the deal. The main character asked the head of the clan to get rid of him. He said this with a smile on his face. From the first time, Louis did not understand Houston, so he asked him again as he thought that the guy was mocking him. The main character realized that he did not express himself quite correctly. He meant that he wanted to stop looking for him. Hearing this, Louis laughed, but he couldn't stop the rumors that were already spreading. But the head of the guild came up with a different solution to the problem. He wanted to make sure that Houston's existence would be overshadowed by more shocking news. Luis wanted to take the two circulating energies, the rumors that are circulating among the players and the rumors that are directly related to the protagonist. So the man can make Houston's journey to the 20th floor less noticeable? The guy agreed to these conditions, but Lewis still felt that he had lost the deal. The man also wanted to ask the main character a few more questions, provided that Houston would answer truthfully. According to rumors from the 15th floor, the main character was wrapped in fluffy clothes that made sounds during the battle. Houston decided not to hide his secret so as not to spoil the relationship in the future, as the truth would be revealed sooner or later. What Louis saw in the next second, he could not have predicted under any circumstances. From his spatial backpack, Houston took out his butts, which were not very happy to accept the guild leader. The main character suggested that on the eighth floor, the man killed many of their brethren, but Luis decided to change the unpleasant topic for him. Houston also revealed all about his past life outside the tower and where he got his friends from. As the main character said, initially his goal was to make ends meet, but then everything changed. While other players perceive the passage in the tower as a game, Houston treats it as reality. Luis realized that the main character is completely immersed in what is happening in the tower. Houston also asked the head of the guild about the reason for his coming to the tower. He assumed that the man was passing it out of boredom. Louis denied everything, but the feeling of discomfort remained. Louis had the feeling that the main character knew him better than he knew himself. And at this point, Houston was about to leave, since the deal was made. Meanwhile, at the headquarters of the Hippocrates Guild, the head was informed about the unknown that was attacking the factory complexes. The man was surprised by the impudence of the attacker as he does not hide his face. The subordinate also said that Rachel is now in the hospital, but no one is watching her in connection with the reconstruction of factories. The girl was the victim of one of the clashes with an unknown magician. She was badly injured. Therefore, in order to make sure of her current condition, the head of the guild decided to visit Rachel personally.